inventory systems. So many games have them. And so many games have the ability to sort the inventory. Because it makes sense. You have a bunch of stuff, you need to organize them in a specific way. And one of those ways is actually alphabetical. You pick up a bunch of stuff and you want to just order them from A to Z or Z to A. Well, prior to 5.4, it was actually difficult to sort these things. Since 5.4 and 5.5, we had a few extra nodes that help us with sorting this. In 5.3 and below, it's a little more difficult, but there's still a way of doing it purely in blueprints. So if you're like me and don't know any C++ and are making your game entirely in blueprints, you can actually sort your inventory systems alphabetically even now. Now, when I specify sorting the inventory system, this is assuming you're sorting something like a struct. A struct is just a variable that holds basically a lot of other variables inside of it. One of them is maybe the name of the object. And that's what we're going to be using as our demonstration. I'll be sorting a struct alphabetically, first in the 5.3 and below version, and then in the 5.4 and 5.5 version. So that way, no matter which version of Unreal you're using, you should be able to have some kind of sorting alphabetical for your structures. So with that, let's get right into the 5.3 and below version. For both of these versions, I will be using the simple struct that is just going to have a name field with a string, an index that's an integer, and it's just these two, that's pretty much it. The name is so we can order it alphabetically, and the index so you can see where the index was originally, and where it has changed to. And I'll be using a simple blueprint actor where I've already set up the array of structs over here, all with a unique name. And I've made sure that the index is just in the order of the index they are, so we can actually see it later on where it moves to. So let's get started on the 5.3 version. We will be doing this all on event begin play. Well, to begin with, we're gonna need to get the original struct and we need to loop on each one of these. So we'll do a simple for each loop. And now we need to get the information from it. So I'll drag out the array element, and let's do a simple break struct. And now we have access to the name and the index. So this is great. We can now get the name to sort with. But like I said before, in 5.3 below, there is no just sort string array. That's not a thing. So we have to do kind of a more manual thing. And the more manual thing is the way I found a way to do it. Doesn't mean it's the best way to do it. It's just one that I've figured out for myself. And that is basically sampling the actual letters and assembling them together and using that to then sort with. Now, what am I talking about? Well, if I drag out from the name, first I'm gonna do to upper. And now we have, all, anything we've put in here is now just uppercase for convenience. And now we have a nifty little node that it's called get character as number. This one right here. And so this gets us the letter we have typed in here as a number. Now. Let's do a demonstration first. I can go ahead and just put this on begin play with a simple print string. And I'm going to just type in the letter A capital, and I'm going to take this return value and just type it in. If I drag out the blueprint into the world and then hit play, you can see in the top left corner, we have 65. So that is the number of the letter A. If I then go ahead and change it to the capital Z and we hit play it again, we see we get the number 90. So both of these are two digit numbers. Now, 91 becomes lowercase a, and then it goes past 100, becoming three digits. For this demonstration, I'll be using just the two-digit version that is only for English. But if you wanted to, you can absolutely use this for other languages, but there is a limitation. The amount of characters you can do is dependent on the number because it's a matter of digits. We're going to be using int32 to basically take these numbers, stitch them together, and then whatever fits inside of it integer of 32 bit we can use and sort with. So if we're using, for example, a three digit length, we can fit three characters in there. So we can sort by like A, B, C. But if you're using two, we can obviously fit more characters to sort through more of them. It depends on what you need to do, but that is the limitation. It's not gonna sort the entire word, it's gonna sort it based on the first little bit of the word. So that's just a heads up for the 5.3 and below version. But now that we understand that, we can go ahead and return back to actually setting this up using this get character as number. So again, we're going to with all uppercase because that way they're all two digits. And I wanna get the first three in my case. So I'm gonna grab the first, second, and third. We're we'll just copying it twice. The index for the second one will be one and the index for the last one will be two. So now we have the first, second, and third character of whatever the name is. Well, I want to append these numbers together. So from here, I'm just drag out. I'm going to do a two string and we're gonna convert this integer into a string again. We're gonna do that for all three of them. And then we're gonna take these strings and we're going to append them. So we're gonna append the first one, then the second one, then the third one. So effectively, we have taken a string, we're converting it to numbers, and then we're recombining the numbers. So now the first three characters are just reordered in this full lengthwise number. 
Great, so now we need to be able to store this. Well, like I said, we're storing it as a number. So I'll go ahead and add ourselves a new variable. I'll call it something like name value. It is going to be of a type integer and it is going to be an array because we want to do it on every single one of these names. Of course, we need it to be an array. And from here, I'm going to drag out name value and I'm going to use a simple add node and I'm going to take the string and plug it into our add here. So once again, we're converting it back into a number and that is what we're going to be saving. Now, this assumes that you have all three of these actually filled in with at least a three letter word in all of these places. But what if you don't? Let's say the minimum amount of letters you have before you have a space is two. So you have index zero, one, and then two might be a space. Well, that's okay. We can work around that. I'm going to drag this append a little bit to the right. And from C here, I'm going to use a select string. And we're going to check if this get character as number is equal to zero. Because if it is equal to zero, that means it did not find a proper character. And so if that is the case, just put in zero, zero. Otherwise, go ahead and use the actual number you need. So great, we have now converted the first three characters into numbers. Now, what do we do with them? Well, we're going to need to loop on the original struct one more time. So I'm going to do uncompleted here. I'm going to just loop again on the original struct. Then I'm going to grab our name values and I'm going to use a node called min of int array. This gets me the minimum value of the int array. And since we've converted the words into a number, we can get it in order because alphabetically, as you saw, A was 65, Z was 90. It is all in order. So then from the original struct, we can go ahead and get a reference to the actual smallest thing in that index. And now we can start storing it. To do that, I'm going to add a new variable. And actually I'm going to just duplicate the original struct and I'm calling this the sorted struct. I'm going to compile it and make sure that it is cleared of all my previous stuff so it's nice and empty. And now I can take this sorted struct and add this get node to it from the loop. So it's going to get the smallest one and it's going to add it. But now we want to make sure that it is no longer the smallest one. So we need to do that. I'm going to take our name value over here and duplicate it a little to the right. And from here, I'm going to do set array element. It's going to go right after the add node. Now the index is going to be the index that we just got. So we'll just pipe that through. And then the item is the new value we want to set to, which in our case is just going to be a bunch of nines. Basically, all we're doing is we're getting the smallest value and making sure it is no longer the smallest value. Effectively, all you need to do is make sure that, that all those nines, that digit we put in, is just bigger than anything you could have prior to it. So there we go. So that should be all good with us. We now have a new sorted struct. Now, technically speaking, this is done, but I just want to go ahead and print out both of these versions so we have a way of actually previewing this. So I'll just take our sorted struct. I'll grab ourselves another for each loop. And this is just to, so we can go ahead and print it out by getting ourselves a break on the for each loop. And then I'll drag out of the loop body and do a print text instead of a print string. This way from the index, I can drag out and do format text, which allows us to basically specify a little more advanced print. So I'm going to do curly brackets and inside of that, I'll put A. I'm going to put a colon space and then curly brackets and B. And all I'm going to do is put the name into B and the index into A. So we're going to have a go basically the index it was originally and then the name of it. And I'll change this to appear for, let's say, 10 seconds. So we can take a look. And as a reminder, if I select the original struct, this was the original order. Cookie, pie, milkshake, cake, candy apples, raisins, donuts, ice cream, pastries, and pudding. And now if we play, well, look at that. There's our order. As you can see, it is alphabetical order. Now it's going up because it prints out and then moves it down. But you can see we have cake, candy, cookie, all correctly ordered. Then it continues on all the way up to raisins. And these were the original locations. So you can see it has sorted it alphabetically. Now, as I mentioned, this is the 5.3 method. So it, in this version, it only sourced the first three characters. If I was to do this with a Japanese character, for example, Japanese characters like the hiragana uh, characters are five digits long. So it means you could only sort two. So you could still do them, but there, you could only sort two of them using this method. It's still possible to do at least some sorting with it. And once you're dealing with characters like that, Honestly, probably just having it sorted by the first character would be pretty nice rather than having nothing. So now let's go check out the 5.4 method that is 
a lot simpler and actually does the entire thing. We're going to start very similarly to this one. So I'm going to take the original struct, the for each loop and the break. I'm going to duplicate it down here as our beginning. But immediately at this point, it is already going to be different. First of all, I'm going to right click on the name and I'm going to promote a variable. And this is going to be our name array. I'm going to delete this set node and then right click on string to make it an array. And then I'm immediately going to duplicate the name array and I'll rename it to sorted array. So we have two string arrays now. I'm going to grab the name array and grab the sorting array. And we're just need to add the name here to both of these arrays. Now, you don't need to specifically use an add node for both times. You can absolutely use one and then just set one with the other on completed. For ease of use, I'll just go ahead and just use an add node so I can just plug them both of them in like so. Now comes the awesome new feature. I'll grab our sorted array. And if I drag out of this, I can search for the word sort and check it out, sort string array. In fact, if I don't have anything selected and I select sort, since 5.4, we have sort byte, float, integer, integer 64, name and string arrays. So I'll go ahead and use a sort string array on completed. I'm only sorting the sorted one. For the options here, we can do stable sort. It prevents the order of identical elements, but is slower. And for us, we don't want this. And we can also change the order of ascending or descending. Now, because it prints down to up, I'll just choose descending. So that way when it prints it, it will be the right side up. So in our case, I'll just use descending for now. So now how do we use this? Well, we take our sorted array now and we need to do a for each loop for each of these things simple for each loop and now we have the name of it now we have a copy of it in the original array in this name array so i'll take our name array and all we need to do is find this array element that's been sorted in the original array and it's going to give us the original index so now using the original struct we can go ahead and get that original index at the correct location. And as you, you might have guessed, we then need to add it to the sorted struct because this is now officially the very first thing in the struct that is correctly sorted. And then it's gonna do the next one and the next one. And it's effectively going to resort this original struct to be like the sorted array in a new sorted struct. And at this point, you already have what you need, but just like before, I'm going to do a print string here. So I'm gonna take all of this, I'm gonna duplicate it down here so we can go ahead and do a little print string. I'm just gonna rename this to be a 5.4 method. And I'm going to change the color here to something like green. But as you can see, the actual main section of this is considerably simpler. And now if I hit play, you can see the 5.4 methods works just as well. And because we sorted it in descending order, you can see we have them alphabetical going down. So we have cake, candy, cookie, donut, ice cream, milkshake, pastries, pie, pudding, and raisins all in order. And because it's sorting a string, this actually supports the entire string not just the first few characters. So it's actually more powerful and similar to use. So now you have the power to sort your arrays alphabetically. And if you're using the 5.4 and above method, well, might have just found a few more ways to sort some other arrays you might need. Now, as always, the project files of this will be available on my Patreon if you need to get a closer look. And there you'll be able to join these wonderful people in supporting what I do. It really means a lot. Or if you'd like to join the community, the link to the Discord will be down below as always. And if you're interested in seeing more stuff like this, please let me know in the comments and I'll do more general blueprint tutorials for you guys in the future as well. But if you want to see more awesome Unreal tutorials, check out this video right over here for some more Unreal goodness.